In the fall of 1955, uh, or prior to 1955, John Frankenheimer, who'd been in the Air Force in a sister squadron, came out to California as a director. And I was his stage manager on the Climax show. And he promised me the job as associate director when Playhouse 90 started. And about the same time, uh, there was an opening in management and I was leaned on to take the job in management, which I didn't want to do in the worst way. So I met with a fellow named H. Grant Tice, who sort of has the job then that I have now. And uh, I said, I don't think you respect your managers. You pay them $120 a week. And uh, I'm making 165 as a stage manager, and I want to be a director, and I really don't think I'd be interested. And he said, in effect, well, you think about it. And if you're still around, the next time a job comes up, why, uh, uh, maybe you'll be considered for it. But I would really seriously suggest that you, uh, that you do this. And I said, well, I have a, a wife and two children. I really can't afford to take a cut and pay back to 120. At minimum, I'd like a base pay of 165, so I match what I get now. He says, I guess we could do that. I said, well, you're going to have a problem with your other managers because we had a rule at that time, if you worked 10 hours, you got $2 meal money on top of it, tax-free. And they all worked from uh, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., and two minutes after 7, they were out the door, but they were here till 7 o'clock every night to pick up that extra 10 bucks a week because that was, that was real money. So I said, well, let me think about it over the weekend, and I'll, uh, I'll let you know on Monday. So I came back on Monday and said, I'll, I'll make you a deal. I'll try it for a year. If I don't like it, you make me an associate director without prejudice, and if I do, I'll let you know. He said, okay, that's fair. So I went into management, and it was manager of stage operations. I was in charge of the studios, the stage hands, the stage managers and cue card people and some lighting folks. The hard thing was at the end of the season, this happened in January, I guess of 56, and when it got down to June, I had to lay off eight of the stage managers who'd broken me in. And I was a pretty dirty bird uh, around town. And four of them were left, uh, or three. No, four, four. And uh, one day, a fellow named Sam Gary, whom I imagine you know, came up and said, with three other guys, and we said, uh, we've been, you know you're a pretty dirty guy. You, you know, I said, yes, I know. He says, we've been trying to think of something nice we could say about you. And he said, we've thought about it all day. We finally come up with it, and it is this. Here we are, a Protestant, a Catholic, a Mormon, and a Jew. So you obviously didn't do it on that basis. And they walked out of the office. And I was practically in tears. It was the only nice thing anybody had said to me. But that's the way it was in those days. And that's why as soon as I got to be the salesman for the facility sometime later, uh, I encouraged daytime programs because they go all year long. And uh, you can keep a much more stable group of people and a happier group of people if they know they have job security. And as it is now, even with all the cutbacks that have taken place in corporate America, we haven't laid off a staff person here for some time. We haven't laid off a staff technician, I think, probably for six years. 